available for us to check over in the future was to take a look back at the 2007 comprehensive plan section and kind of walk through and figure out what are some good comments? What do you want to build on? What feels like is still relevant for today? And what maybe is not a good fit or doesn't feel right, or maybe perhaps wasn't accomplished. Uh, and one of the suggestions from Randy last time was to maybe create a little bit of a matrix to kind of talk about what was an objective or an action. Was it actually achieved? Were there barriers to it or are there still barriers? And then is it still desirable? I wanna get general opinions and thoughts first, and then we'll probably take it step by step and walk through what that actually looks like and begin kind of documenting what we wanna see for the 2023 version of this plan. So as a reminder, what we're doing here is just looking through that first plan and keeping in mind the, the idea of looking toward 2045. So what is it gonna look like for 2045? So I'm gonna go ahead and pull up on the screen the 2007 transportation plan. Oh, and before we do go ahead and get going, hopefully everybody at the table does know each other, but just in case, I'm Luke Sims, I'm the assistant city planner. To my right is Carlos Espinoza, the city planner. We are co-leading this process and I'll just wrap around the table real fast. Um, Mitchell Johnson, member of the subcommittee. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Diane Lute Geb Munson. And Frank. He's Karlupka from Miller Ingenuity. Perfect. So what are some thoughts that maybe jumped out to you as you were reading the 2007 plan, some initial takeaways that you could provide for the group? So, um, Luke, I'll just lead off quick here. The one thing that I noticed, I mean, that there was a fair amount of stuff in there that was already knocked down. I mean, that uh, I think was accomplished, you know, when I look at it, stuff on through there. So um, that's why I said, was, uh, I'd be happy to see um, your perspective or the, the city's perspective on, you know, where they thought that they had the, um, um, you know, hits and misses and stuff on through there. And then, like you said, if there's still some barriers and stuff on uh, there, I, I think the one part that still stands out to me, though, is um, the uh, uh, rail traffic right through town that still seems to be one of those uh, continuing sore spots and stuff on through there. And uh, I also, I mean, the one thing that jumped out, uh, although I didn't know it was on the table, was the, uh, I think it's the um, uh, Union Pacific um, area down by the levee and stuff down there where they do their switching activity. I, I think, again, the proposal was to uh, eliminate that or to move that someplace else or something like that, you know, and through there. And because I that that whole um, riverfront area, I think, is, is an underutilized uh, you know, diamond in the rough for us here in Winona. When you look at what other cities along the river have done, you know, with that, Lacrosse is a good example. But you know, up the river and stuff too. There's other good examples, and and so I'm hoping that we can continue on that path of of uh, making that uh, a more inviting place and and easier access for everybody. That's actually a really good point regarding Levy Park and the the, uh, the rail yard that's located there. I know that there is still work ongoing on removing some of the unused siding paths there. Um, I do want to note that I believe that that one line does have to remain there regardless. And Brian, I know that you're getting ready to say something. You can provide a little bit more context to that maybe. Is it federal legislation that it has to be there? Is that right? Uh, yeah, it, there is Bay State and several other people that definitely use that. It, it can't go away. But there are a lot of spurs off there, especially through that right next to the, I'll call it the movie theater parking lot that aren't being used and honestly can't be used. Um, railroad, obviously infrastructure in place. They wanna keep it just to say it's grandfathered and we're working definitely behind the scenes to make that stuff go away. Just dealing with the railroad is difficult. And the crazy thing is, is paid Blumentritt to do a big plan on who owns what and what it's there for. Yeah. Most of that stuff's there by ordinance, not by easement. So we have a little more leverage than we'd normally have, but it's a snail's pace. Go ahead, Mitch. Um, so first impressions. Um, so there are definitely some things that did get done. I will say that, um, but I mean, I look at issues and I, the things to me that got done are Port and Commercial Harbor, um, 
left some of the land use and then some of the railway things with WSU. I know that those two underpasses got made and I'll just come out and say it like my feeling about the railroad issue is that it's generally a non issue. Um, there's like nothing we're going to be able to do about that, right? We can't do an overpass. I mean, that costs 20, $30 million, you know, and then you would have to start it. What? I think one of you said last week, you'd have to start it at like, I don't even know, like Wabasha or something like that to get like over the top, you know, because you have to go a certain height over it. Well, no, yeah, like the rail or, or even like, you know, the street. I'm just saying like, I just think that's not the place to spend our efforts to just say it frankly i think i want like concrete things that can be done um so anyway sorry that's a bit of an aside from general impressions but um when i think of intermodal connections which is one of the first issues that are on there i i don't see any defined path to get from the bluffs straight through all the way to the flyway trail which to me, if we're thinking about just recreation wise, you know, like if you would have something that could go from end to end, it just signs like, like low hanging fruit, I guess is what I'm looking for. How can we repaint the roads to, you know, what, what am I looking for to promote the different like land use and development to like increase walking and biking and stuff. It's just painting the roads and then committing to keeping that paint on the roads. And again, I also am just some random guy, so I don't really know what can be done or not, you know what I mean? But like that, just from like no knowledge, that's my first impressions. A few years ago, we actually had a statistics course over, or a mathematics course over at Winona State, go out and create a model for how interconnected all of those park and rec destinations were, which I think is really what you're getting at is, how are we connecting destinations in a multimodal format? Uh, and it did really point out how segregated those elements that were south of Highway 61 were from the rest of the community. And that does create a bit of a difficulty, especially if the city of Winona is committed to an outdoor recreation um, type element. And it does seem to come clear. One of the things that we're going to talk about later today is what do we hear from phase one engagement? And you're right, natural resources, recreation space really did come through um, and is reflected in that draft vision and values. Any other initial comments? I do have some takeaways. I, contrary to Mitch, I thought a lot of things in here were actually achieved. He said a couple, but I think there were a lot. I was really impressed with the fact that like the bridge wasn't even an idea yet. And all of the things that were speculated that could happen around the bridge mostly came to fruition. There were a handful of, mostly my takeaway from this document was that the stuff that I'd like to see happen are the things that haven't happened from this document, which I was excited about. I thought that there were some great ideas. One piece that was surprising to me was enhancing and supporting passenger rail service. I realized this was written at a time when there was a lot more talk about that at the state level and even nationally about um, high-speed rail, but there were some components there that I found relevant still as a person who uses Amtrak and has uh, limited car use. Um, the section about the citywide trail system, there were a number of points in here that I think haven't been achieved but are still very worthwhile in looking towards. Um, there were a lot of different ways that the road diet was either alluded to or specifically cited. And I think, although that was a bit of a disaster uh, at the city level, I still think that's something that's not just relevant for Broadway, but is something that clearly was in this comprehensive plan as a, a, a thing to shoot for. And I think it's still a great idea to talk about what we need for car space versus um, beautification. And there's a couple of references too to like that street maintenance can also include landscape um, changes, which I think particularly with the building of these new roundabouts is a great opportunity for the city to be really forward thinking in how we present ourselves as people enter the space. So that's my overarching takeaways. 
Yeah, I think that that's a really good element. Talking about landscaping, talking about things like street trees, um, when we consider the transportation elements of our, of our community, and I think Brian brought it up last time, you know, it's on a grid system that has a lot of value to it. And within that public right of way that divides us into individual blocks, we have the actual road from curb to curb, and then we also have stormwater investments, and we also have sewer line investments and water investments and trees. And all of that does interplay with how enjoyable is it to walk, bike, drive through our community and into our community to those different destinations. So that's a really good point about incorporating landscaping. And I hear it from the three of you and the nods that I'm seeing as being valuable going forward. Is there anything that you thought that was like a key element that came out of this plan that maybe could be enhanced further? So we've talked about, we accomplished a lot, but what is something that was really appealing that maybe we could build on into the next 15 years? Um, perhaps if we do want to start with landscaping, do we think that maybe there should be an element here that talks about that explicitly as a portion of the section? Or do you think that there's something about, you know, boulevard utilization or something similar that could be integrated here? Is this where it's important to say that I'm a landscaper for my job? <laughs> and maybe I have just a slight bias. And now that we have a vested interest, we'll write down landscaping. <laughs> That's what I just want to lay out there. No, I, but I will weigh in and say, <laughs> no, you can't hire me because I work for someone else. But I do think particularly when we're talking, I mean, Healthy Lake Winona has been a vibrant organization for a number of years and has encouraged better land use within our public parks and incorporating some of those ideas, particularly um, concerning native plants, like using native plants in our landscaping citywide would not only cut down on long-term maintenance, but again, it's a forward thinking move that is better for the environment, better for visual aesthetics, safer in roundabouts. Like there's lots of different reasons to go that route. And, uh, you know, same for Boulevard trees, it really changes the neighborhood dynamic and makes people want to go on walks. So, um, I do think there's a lot to be said for, yeah, particularly when we're looking at streets being remade and sidewalks being remade and curb cuts being remade. That should be a part of the plan in my book, but, but I'm a landscaper. <laughs> I think one of the things that becomes really apparent and it's when you have had it and then it goes away. And so I'm thinking of, for instance, in the Valley Oak subdivision where they've had all the elm trees, not the elm tree, ash trees, I'm sorry, ash trees most recently. And unfortunately, I mean, as they're cutting those out and trying to save some, oh my goodness, it, it just changed the whole outlook on, you know, the subdivision. So yes, we take it for granted, right? Sometimes that somebody planned ahead and put that stuff in place. And then when we lose it, it, it really does. I mean, even, you know, neighbor's yards here is a wind, uh, a storm goes through and knocks down a bunch of trees and it just really changes the whole, you know, landscape stuff through there. So I, I, I agree. I think the, any opportunity we have, I think even that proposal that I think was being, I mean, that was maybe put forward for Broadway with a kind of, wasn't it like a median or something with, or a boulevard, if you will, down the center. Uh, it looks, I mean, it looks really nice. I think it would really make that a, I mean, quite an attraction, you know, if you will, a, a place, but. Um. I just pretty much just agree with everything that was just said. Um, but like to point it directly back to the comp plan, like objectives that I think we should continue to try and seek out with this next comp plan and it addresses exactly what Randy and Diane were just talking about it's so incorporate traffic calming measures in future street construction and to address identified neighborhood problems design new streets at a, an appropriate width so that way people don't drive fast I mean it's all I was like like Diane I was surprised it's all here like it, it really is you know but then and I, this is, I swear this will be the only time that I bring it up, but with the Broadway thing, it literally went directly against our agreed upon comprehensive plan. I mean, by, I'm looking at it, you know? So I just think prioritizing that in the future and then like doing it with like, like the right type of landscaping, you know what I mean? Thinking about how to make it a destination, you know? And my idea about Broadway is turn it and call it into Church Street, and then have it be a scenic drive to look at all of the epic churches that we have right down it, 
anyway, I think it would, I mean, it would have been awesome. And to think of the really wide range of people who would come and just drive casually down Broadway to look at the churches, you know? So anyway, yeah, those are my things. Just do the objectives that we, we have. Yeah. So, so I'm hearing that there's a, a desire to reiterate some of these elements that have already been included, things like having narrower streets for traffic calming, things like having street trees. I imagine that sidewalks are also something that are included here. They're included to be on both sides of the street. Right now in our code, we only require it in one side of the street. Um, maintenance of sidewalks, which is something that we do really, really well, um, is something that's also included here. And I'm glad to see is, is probably something that we are all comfortable with. Um, one thing that I wrote down as we were going through this matrix I'm going to hand out to you guys as kind of a bit of a homework here today is when we're looking at those barriers, you know, last time Brian mentioned it's been about 20 years since we've had an actual city street project funded in terms of like we're going to go out and do a street and actually have the opportunity to implement these on a local level. Uh, so I wrote down funding, but then and I do want to touch just briefly on Broadway again. Yeah. <laughs> I do want to touch on Broadway again briefly, though, because our engineering department did go out and secure funding in support of a, a corridor study in support of a comp plan. And then if there is a if there is a conversation coming out of this comprehensive plan process about will or maybe about marketability of projects, there might need to be an element here related to not only do you get a safe street, but what is a street that's going to be easier to maintain or easier to replace or repair, et cetera. Um, some of the elements that we want to touch on are what is the economic impact of putting in public infrastructure as a platform for building wealth and wealth, meaning putting your house on there. So we're going to have a line of houses or we're going to have a line of businesses. How do we get to that point? And I bring that up largely just because we have those three elements that we're trying to talk about equity, technology, and sustainability. And there's a fiscal sustainability piece there as well. And I think that we all want to know that even though we're putting in or putting in narrow streets is safer, it also can improve traffic flow if we have good roundabouts, for example, or if we have actually controlled intersections rather than uncontrolled intersections, um, or we have multimodal transportation. Now, Carrie, I do want to throw you right on right into the spotlight here because you did get in just as we were talking about things that we were that we saw as first impressions about this document on um, the 2007 plan what did you like about it what didn't you care for what do you feel needs to be addressed longer and, and more and if you can grab a microphone and talk into it that would be good because we're recording this and we want to be able to pick it up on all those microphones yeah i I'm very sorry I was late. There was a eye injury as I was supposed to be walking out the door. Not me, a son, and he's fine. <laughs> um, so I, yeah, I was impressed. There's a lot, I mean, that was being considered and I'm glad. <laughs> um, for me, the, yeah, um, I don't know. <laughs> I'm trying to remind myself I had, I had COVID when I read this <laughs> and I should have reviewed it before, but um, I'm looking at it now because I did highlight the things. <laughs> Dog ate my homework, had COVID. No, I'm just kidding. No, Carrie, I go mean, ahead. I was, I was um, kind of foggy, <laughs> but it's, it's, I highlighted, which is a favor to my present self, but I should have reviewed. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, want to pass <laughs> but I do, I was impressed with all that was covered and I did think though for me my I'm less worried about um so many of the details about you know is traffic going um too fast or is it possible to bike is it comfortable to bike is it comfortable to walk I think most of Winona is really um, easy to navigate and there are some places where there could be improvement and if we had unlimited funds and if the, you know <laughs> um, then I guess let's shoot for the moon but clearly we don't and we can only do so much and I think that the things that for me are the things that I want to concentrate on and, ha and were mentioned here are um, trying to make it more like trying to make transportation accessible for everyone because if you can't 
bike as easily as you'd like to to a place, you can deal with that. And if you are getting to work slower than you'd like to, as long as you're not on that intersection that's under construction right now, which is, oh my gosh. <laughs> but for the most part, it, you can deal with it. But I think if you just don't even have access to what this community has to offer because you can't get, you can't afford to get anywhere, that's what I think is, and, and the bus system um, needing to become more usable. Um, the, those are the things that I'm most focused on and that I hope that we can make improvements on. So I'm going to tease out something that I think that you were you were getting at, and something that was brought up right when we were starting this meeting is a lot of us feel really comfortable in Winona. It's a good place to live. It's a good place to actually get around walking and biking. And there are key elements to that. We've already touched briefly on the grid system and interconnected redundancy of streets and the ability to um, really affect change. Or if you have to go through a construction project, you can just reroute to another area, which is exactly what Carrie was getting at. Now, as we talk about development patterns, one portion of this current 2007 plan touched on how when we create new streets or when we reconstruct streets, we should really be focused on, focusing on, on that connectedness element. And is it safe to say, based on what Carrie was just saying, that we all actually feel that the, the core of the city probably has really good examples of that? Does anybody wanna try and pull out or tease out what you actually think? If we think about it, what are some of those elements that are desirable? We've touched on street trees, we've touched on sidewalks. Is it road widths? Is it the fact that we have higher curb or um, you know high L-shaped curbs rather than soft mountable curbs? Is it the number of curb cuts and alley alleyways? I'm just spitballing ideas out here. Feel free to take them if you feel like they're important to you and you like them. But what what do you like? What are those elements that maybe subconsciously we don't realize, but we want to get on paper here as part of the transportation section of the new plan? And I'm, I'm hearing a lot of silence, but you're thinking, and that's the important thing. And this is actually something that we're hitting on with a few other committees as well, as people are talking about things like, oh, our built environment is really appealing, but what actually makes it feel appealing? And people don't realize that it's because, you know, we have fairly small lots, for example, or we have a mix of densities in our community, or that we have commercial nodes that are conveniently about 0.3 miles away from each other, which is a walkable distance. So similarly, how can we feel that with, the, with, with our transportation pattern? One thing that I would pick up that you were mentioning is that um, my partner and I just went on a walk the other night for like an hour and a half from one end of town to the other through all kinds of beautiful, quiet neighborhoods. And I realized part of the reason they're beautiful, quiet neighborhoods is that very few of our streets go all the way through. <laughs> and so there's all these dead ends, which can be really obnoxious if you're a new driver to town, but can be really wonderful if you want to walk in a quiet neighborhood because there isn't through traffic. And, and there's places where like, you know, the street is, it ends and it's empty and that's kind of lovely. Um, it, yeah, and, it, and I think that those, I live on one of those streets and it encourages a different feel to the neighborhood too, where people are more apt to be in their front yard than their backyard because the street is quiet. Um, and so you see a lot more people. Um, but also in, in my case, I live on Dakota street. You can't drive through, but you can, there is a passing over the track. So you can ride a bike very easily. Or if you were in a wheelchair or using a walker, you could still get to the small lake from my house, even though you have to cross the tracks. So in my case, I feel like our neighborhood in particular really caters to walking, biking, rollerblading, whatever the thing is. And it's a little bit harder to drive, which I think is kind of wonderful. So that's one of, I would say, the assets, which also is maybe a detriment for different people that prefer car travel. So Maybe just to piggyback on that, I mean, I agree. I think we've got good connectors, you know, streets that really work good for, I mean, if you're trying to get from one end of town to the other or from the area, you know what those, you know, are. Uh, and you typically stay away from maybe some of the more residential, you know, kind of streets and stuff on through there as, as part of that. I think that's been a positive. I, um, the other part, uh, and Luke, you had 
had uh, mentioned it as well, but the maintenance of the sidewalks, I think has been good. I mean, you're out there, you're seeing that. I like, uh, and I'm sure probably it's part of the uh, ADA compliance stuff, but the approaches and stuff have been, you know, a lot of them I've seen have been redone. You got the, um, the a lot of new um, crosswalk signals and stuff, you know, in place so that if people, you know, come up, they don't have to worry about whether or not they should, could, or cross. They just press the button and it'll tell them, right, you know, when it's safe to cross. And so uh, all of those have been, I think, positive um, you know, enhancements and stuff to the city and it just makes it easier for getting around. And um, the, the one area that, you know, I think again, like from uh, those that would uh, prefer to bike sometimes, you know, and I'm thinking of, uh, I know that like, you know, some bike paths are marked, but like they don't necessarily have a medium protecting. So you, you gotta wonder sometimes uh, when a car feels compelled to get around somebody. So I, on, on Sarnia, there's, you see at Sarnia and Franklin maybe is where they're, and so there's not a left turn lane there to get on to, from Sarnia onto Franklin. And so if they're sitting there at the light and you're waiting, there's an open bike lane right there. And there's, there's that uh, people feel compelled to, oh, yeah, I'm gonna you know, see out there, but if somebody's riding a bike and is unsuspecting, right, you get that, you know, on there. So those, I think just, it would be to have more clear delineation and, you know, how do you do that to keep it safe for those that are riding bikes so that they feel that, right? So they feel safe uh, and not have to wonder whether or not, uh, you know, they're jeopardized, so. Uh, Brian, I do want to recognize that you just joined us and say hello. Hopefully hello. you can hear us. Perfect. It looks like your um, camera is giving us a lot of green lines. I don't know if that's intentional or if... Uh... No. Okay. As long as we can hear you, that's what matters. Um, Carrie was just reaching for a microphone to add a thought, but then we're going to turn to you, Brian. So take your time and assemble some, marshal some thoughts about your first impressions on the 2007 plan. Carrie? recommend you think it through right now because <laughs> I joined late and it was terrible. Um, <laughs> um, speaking of the biking lanes, I really like 7th Street. I don't know if if this was because some mastermind made it this way, but really it is a safe street to bike on the whole street. People are driving carefully or not driving on it at all. Like because I don't I really like it like on Sarnia when there's a dedicated lane and your bike can go there and the car parked cars can go next to it instead of having to weave in and out because I'm often biking with little kids and it's so scary because they never look when they're going around a car to see if another car is about to run them over <laughs> and <laughs> so I just make them go on the sidewalk in that situation but on 7th street it's always good and so I think those lesser traveled by car streets that are you know, that have constant reminders that this is a bike friendly street and watch for bikes is, um, in my experience, a really good way. <laughs> All right, Brian, I hope that your thoughts are now marshaled. Can you give us some takeaways, positive, negative, anything you want to build on from the 2007 plan? Well, look, you know, a lot of thoughts about where we got too involved with this what could be done to improve transportation in Winona are contained in this 2007 plan. Let's see, some of them have been done, uh, some haven't. Like the extending Louisa Street, and even the map of extending it all the way to 43 would take some of the pressure off Mankato Avenue uh, problem out there. Just, you know, geographically, we've got so much traffic gets pinched into that spot. That would been a nice, a nice way to fix that, take some of the pressure off of that. Um, be nice to, yeah, there's some of the rail traffic rearrangements that are in there would be good and it's probably still possible. Uh, help minimize their impact on the rest of us in town. Um, yeah, the 7th Street biking it's a good street to bike on. Less, not much traffic, but there are a lot of stop signs. Maybe that helps making it bikeable, but it is bumpy. That's kind of what I got right now. Yep. Sure. I'm going to use that comment about 
um, rail and extending Louisa Street a little bit to maybe talk our transition slightly. I mean, we've been talking a lot about pedestrian friendliness and bike friendliness. Um, let's talk a little bit about freight and transportation. Uh, we do know that in the 2007 comprehensive plan, we call out ways that we can help promote and accommodate um, those elements of our community. And they are critical for many of our industrial um, employers in particular. When we talk about truck traffic, for example, a couple elements here, we're talking about reassessing the overall uh, truck route system in the city of Winona, as well as potentially working with MnDOT on reorienting Highway 43. Do we feel still feel that those are amenable goals to this group and to the comp plan and how it can be reflective of our goals of being, you know, an interconnected community that has access, et cetera? Any thoughts from the group? Is this Highway 43 getting the through truck traffic off of Main Street in Sarnia and some other way around town? I think I think that that was the intention of the 2007 comprehensive plan was to have that conversation. Um, I know that, and Brian can probably um, comment on this. MnDOT probably would be less inclined to be uh, re resurfacing um, Highway 43 if it wasn't actually going to be a truck route. Would be my assumption. They've written us two letters saying no chance will it be rerouted from Main Street, Sarnia, Fourth Street, etc. I mean, they just spent 150 million dollars on a bridge you know that's not going anywhere I, they're spending 17 million although 3 million of it's ours on the roundabout project we can ask them another 10 times and i think we'll get the exact same response and they may shorten the letter next time <laughs> so for that that's the that's the facts that, that's not conjecture yeah no i i mean i asked that i asked the question last time and i mean Brian's answer answered it for me. It doesn't seem like there's a whole lot to do there. You know what I mean? It's with the railways. It's just like, I mean, you're not going to be able to do anything. You know, you're going to get, you're going to try and get in touch with them and then they'll give you a short email, <laughs> you know? So I, I, that's not, I don't think it needs to be a focus, but I will say that when I think of truck traffic, I don't necessarily think of the trucks. I think of the noise and the disruption that comes with that vehicle. And I, to put into context, I live on the intersection of Huff and Sarnia. So a, one of the busiest intersections we got. And the noise is not semis. <laughs> it's cars, motorcycles, and huge souped up pickups. So, for me, I, I don't think we need to address like the economic impact of like truck traffic coming through here. If we want to make those streets more livable for me, <laughs> um, like reduce the noise. I mean, there's a sign that says vehicle noise laws enforced like right by my house and they're not, you know? So again, I don't know if we could talk. I, I have questions. Like, I don't know if that's possible to actually regulate that sort of thing. And I know it's, I'm sure it's complicated, but I mean, I've looked it up a little bit because of where I live. <laughs> I'm the beacon of information again. Yeah. <laughs> um, basically judges throw those out because it's impossible for the cop to prove even if they've got their equipment judges have consistently thrown them out and as many times as i would like the police to write more tickets because it would really help out with speed control this one i don't blame i mean why would you write a ticket and waste your time knowing it knowing you're going to have to go into court defend it and the judge is going to throw it out so that that one i get i wish they would write more speeding tickets so and, and again i from my own like a little bit of research that's what i've seen but then my then what i come out with is like are there traffic calming things it's like we talked about before like make the street look as though you're not supposed to do that you know what i mean or like and i know it's like a subtle thing and you can't there's just going to be some jerks who are just going to do it but like speed bumps i everyone hates them you know what i mean and put it like right on the lake where the cross walk is right there because i've seen people get hit or not get hit, but like get this close to being hit a ton of times just crossing that spot, you know? And again, I don't know if that's possible either, but yeah. If you're looking to get rid of noise, that maybe wouldn't be what you'd want to do because it's the acceleration to deceleration. That's that's what's causing your noise. 
Um, th that would be good speed st strategy, though. I would agree with that. Yep. Huff Sarney or, or we a different place because you said by the lake or were you talking? About oh, well, kids? Huff going through. I mean, they, they okay. use that as a drag strip because there's no, I mean, from Huff no. to 61, there's no traffic calming measures. Right. None. And it's a Other wide street. Lots of people crossing the street at the lakes. I mean, well, it, 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 it is a traffic calming. It's I something hear that. You do intentionally don't throw people in the street to calm traffic. <laughs> but people walking both sides of the street is a proven it traffic does. calming method. But yeah, I know I, I hear you. Yeah. Kids play in the street, whether you like it or not. <laughs> I, I think that that's a really good um, discussion point is how do we design our, our traffic system and our streets to accommodate things like freight traffic, but still be aimed primarily at the livability at the human scale, whether it's kids playing in the street to walking to the lake to using different modes of transportation. And I think that this 2007 plan got really, really close to saying that outright. And then it actually, when it was in the later portions, when it was really discussing some of the road design elements, particularly to relate to, um, to slowing traffic down, traffic calming down, uh, we got a little bit closer to those types of elements. So am I hearing a desire to reiterate those types of design measures um, in the next version of this plan? Is that, is that accurate to say? Yes, I would agree. Perfect. Perfect. I, I like hearing that from people that you know we were getting some things right. To so return ever so slightly back to the the freight element and noise concerns, uh, when we talk about the overall routing of truck traffic, the Second Street um, truck route was called out specifically in this 2007 plan element as being the primary east-west driver. We've already spoken briefly, Randy did, about Levy Park being able to be kind of enhanced as that, as that point. Now, Main Street got some improvements to make crossing there really quite short, pretty easy to do. Do we see a need to, while addressing 2nd Street, uh, either, either reiterating 2nd Street as that primary east-west truck route still, um, but then also other elements to make sure that they're accommodated as a portion of multimodal traffic? and not just the primary east-west um, movers on that route. Is that a similar thing to respond to here in the current plan? I'm looking for yeses, noes, head bobs, comments. Say that in a different way. <laughs> As we talk about street design and accommodating freight traffic, this plan calls out Second Street as an east-west driver. However, the discussion here has also touched on Second Street and accessing the levee as being important to livability and a key component of transportation. Would you like to see that specifically called out in the new plan? Something like design elements along Second Street should prioritize the more human scale rather than the more truck scale, even though it will remain a truck route. Yeah, so I think I mean, right, right down by the levee, having that in there is important, you know, right, stuff on through there. I also think, too, I mean, right, typically, it's not that stuff doesn't happen in the area, but most of the truck traffic is going to happen dur during normal business hours, right? It tends to be. I mean, not that there isn't some off, uh, off time, you know, movement, but most of the heavy activity, at least to those and through there, is going to happen during the day. Uh, weekend kind of stuff that happens, you know, if that's what you're looking to do at the levee or in the evenings, uh, you know, you're not going to have as much traffic going through there, but I think anything you can do right, you know, to enhance that, to make that more so that, people, again, people feel friendly making that crossing and, and walking over there, it's certainly going to benefit, so. One thought is Second Street is a truck route. Those are probably more generally you know, trucks that are going to a local destination, not like the Highway 43 or the, the go the passing through town. Those are generally got so lack of somewhere else better for them to go to get in or out of there. Second Street's probably our spot. Yeah, I, I second what Randy said, and it is the spot, you know, but we do have to be careful to not like block off Levy Park which we also just spent a lot of money on or like some money on, you know? So a lot. 
anyway, yeah. <laughs> so that I I just second what Randy said. Carrie. So with respect to the train, the plans in here about the different things that could help with the train situation, I, I couldn't visualize these things. So I don't know, did any of them, did some of them happen and did they? A couple of the elements in relation to train crossings that did happen uh, were the underpasses over at Winona State, for example, those were redone. Um, talking about levy park we did have a redone crossing at grade there and there was removal of some of the siding elements obviously there's still much more to be done and in my analysis going through here i put down that there were mixed components that, that were actually achieved i think some of them that people specifically wanted to address with this plan and the intermodal plan which was 2002 if i remember correctly were things like an overpass, which would have cost dozens of millions of dollars, um, and that price has gone up. And that impact also on either side of the street probably would have been detrimental to the existing houses and businesses as well. Um, so that wasn't accomplished. And a few other things like at-grade crossings that could be improved also have not necessarily been accomplished everywhere. Uh, I will note that, for example, the Twin Cities Mini, or Milwaukee and um, Chicago train, the second train that we're getting is also leading to two rail improvements from, um, from Amtrak that will be coming forward over the next, I believe, two years. Um, they're doing that portion on the Northwestern um, section, they're re, are redoing that um, portion of the rail and there's a switching component down by the actual passenger rail station, if I remember correctly, or at least it's in their documentation. <laughs> I don't know. I was going to follow up to ask maybe more questions about that because I'm not 100% certain what that entails either. <laughs> hopefully it would be hopefully it would be more of a spot to to hide an Amtrak train while freight goes through would be my assumption, but I don't know. I don't really know. Yeah. So that um that underpass is for walking only, right? Correct. Um so the things that would help with um, rerouting traffic or helping um, get traffic around the trains, none of those have been yet attempted? I think that's probably a fair assessment, yeah, to say okay. rerouting um, car traffic has not occurred, yeah. Um, I, I heard recently that trains are the most like sustainable, like energy efficient way to get things across the country what's Oops. number one <laughs> so um but it made me feel a lot more patient with the trains i guess but it would be nice to get around them that's why you're seeing the longer trains sometimes with an engine in the middle sometimes with the front middle and back because they are a very efficient mode of moving moving material but that makes them longer and longer to cross too the switching activity right is where and i and i think one of the uh items that were outlined in here and i don't know if it ever moved forward was cp yard moving out to the west more on the west end of of town or beyond stuff on through there is that something that is still talked about or or did it just sort of go by the wayside or not because i mean right now it looks like it's still down by the amtrak i mean right or central part, part of the big deal with that is they'd have to fill in a lot of the wetlands and okay. that is the biggest hiccup with it is it. i mean they, they take a long path yeah. and then some widths for some siding tracks and stuff like that okay. you're talking basically east of louisa yes yeah that that that's very difficult there oh, because no, oh i'm sorry no i thought didn't it say west i yeah, thought it was out oh. by modern there's there's yeah. also oh. the other talk there oh and, okay uh, surprise surprise yeah. good you didn't want it there they, they didn't want us to move there but <laughs> over there and then then we'd have to purchase a, a chunk of land yeah so it, it was expensive and okay. kind of wasn't enough room yeah. so in the interest of keeping our, ourselves on track here with time i am going to pass out um, a little bit of a quick review matrix here that i mentioned at the start of the meeting uh we've We've kind of touched on some higher level components here, and I do want to note that when we come forward with the actual transportation section goals and objectives, 
um, some of these components from the 2007 plan, again, might not fit anymore or might be willing to reiterate or carry forward. So what we have in this matrix, and I'm gonna bring it up here on the screen for you, Brian, is an opportunity to maybe get your opinions and from your perception, excuse me, that looks terrible, doesn't that? Wow, that's really bad. Um, I promise it doesn't look like that in reality. But um, as we look at this, you'll be able to go through and take a look at what was the proposed action? Was it achieved? What are the actual barriers to having that accomplished? And is it still desirable to include in the comprehensive plan? So what we want to take a look at and what I wanna hear from you is what is the public's perception of how those elements were addressed? And that perception, you know, as Brian mentioned, you know, he's a wealth of knowledge because he's been here for 18 years and he's been able to be integrated and understand and actually conduct a number of these projects versus what is actually being communicated to the public. And, and you all are not necessarily representative samples of the public because you're involved and you wanted to be a part of this process. But we do wanna hear from you and kind of collect what, what actually would be good to carry forward. So if you can, for our homework for next time, I will send out this matrix to you and that's what we're going to be looking from you. Mitch? Um, I was just gonna ask like, so when I'm answering this, it is from my own knowledge and perception, not my own view of what the public knows. Correct. I, okay. I want to hear from you and I want to hear from you about whether or not you view it as desirable. Because again, the goal okay. of this, you are the working base for this comp plan for this section. It'll go from you to the steering committee, which for another round of review and inclusion, and then to the planning commission and to the city council. So we're using you as that proxy in this instance, not for you, you to go out and say, think, oh, I think the general public thinks this. True, true. So, so what the conversation is, is, you know, maybe include that as barriers. So maybe the public is saying this, but, you know, I know that's not true. So just include it. I um, mean, feel free when we do send out this as a Word document, you know, this is, these are expandable tables. So fill out as much as you want. For the overachievers in the room, I'm expecting paragraphs. For the normal people, just one or two words is perfectly acceptable. <laughs> That's true. That's very true. So, we'll... <laughs> Carrie? So, I think very few of these objectives are objectionable, like that we would say, no, we don't desire, you know, better, you know intermodal connections or <laughs> trail connections like but um it, is it better to be kind of discriminating in what we want to you know more try to narrow down what we're trying to accomplish or just say this seems like a good thing as opposed to there will be few things that we say this seems like a bad thing now yeah i'm not asking you to winnow it down necessarily okay. this section of the conference plan will be as long as it's needed to be in order to accurately reflect the will of our community ideally it's not 150 pages but as we look through that previous comprehensive plan section you know we're looking at approximately 20 pages here so we do have the room to flesh out some of these elements and make sure that we're saying the right things in order to convey to the future public of our city why something is important, why we felt that it warranted inclusion. And in the case of things that we already agree with from the 2007 plan, why it's warranted to reinforce it for a second comprehensive plan. Or if we go back to 1996, it might even be the third time that we said something like, we want a road diet on Broadway, for example, which I know this is a recording meeting, so maybe I shouldn't keep saying that out loud. The thing I'm not seeing in here is, okay, we're kind of by doing this saying that what's in the plan is the only thing that should be in the plan. What if, what if people have new ideas, should we add? Uh, we, the goal is to add. So the, this is still just review of the 2007 plan. And when we get through the end of June, our intention is for us to generate goals and objectives and begin to actually put pen to paper of what should be added to the plan. Um, so this is just one element here. We, we intended these first few meetings to really be background review. Uh, and so we all feel comfortable with, yeah, we, we think that these elements are still solid and they should be included in the plan as we go forward. So yes, I do anticipate us adding to it. That's a really good point.
All right. With that, if there are no further questions about what our future homework is going to be, I do want to touch on what we heard from the public. So I'm going to pull this up. It's, our, it's the second few pages of our original framework that we took a look at last time. I see that Mitch is lamenting not having his notes to link up what he heard from the public with what he wanted. Um, but don't worry, you can include it in your homework. That's why we are assigning homework. So some of the key issues that we key issues and ideas that we heard from the public in phase one of our engagement. And again, we heard from about 2000 members of our community. So that's about a 10th of our total population. Was a desire for safety. Respondents who walk and bike to get to work, shopping or recreation areas really appreciated the overall geographic size and flat streets. And they commented on a variety of barriers to safe, safe walking and biking. And here we have some more deeper descriptions there, um, you know, things like motor vehicles encroaching on bikers or cutting corners or difficult places to cross. And we do have some past information we linked to our complete streets policy and also the elements that we used for the Broadway road diet conversation included things like this is a barrier to cross. So it's not it's not something that hasn't been heard before. Additionally, we heard a, a wayfinding, a note that signage is not present to direct residents and tourists to points of interest. And this is actually something that we almost touched on here in our conversation today was, how do we know that something is a bike route, for example, or how do we know how to get from one point to the other? How, do, how can we connect our different destinations? Similarly, along that, access to areas of interest. So it's wayfinding signage. Respondents also want to note where the shopping area is in Mankato, and Ave Mankato Avenue and 61, and that they're difficult to access without a car. So things like, as Carrie was mentioning, making sure that we have the ability for people of all, of users of all modes of transportation, including transit, walking, biking, to get to those locations. And then transportation equity. So respondents pointed out that walking, biking, and public transit help people access jobs, shopping, and community events. This came up actually in the economic development subcommittee just the other day, as they talked about how we don't actually have buses that serve second and third shift workers when they leave for work and then uh, need to leave work and go back home. So how can we find ways to make sure that that's actually accommodated and promoted in an efficient manner? And some of our employers are even subsidizing rides to go pick up people for work. So if they're already doing that, how can we partner with those individuals? And they make a note here that it's important for teens, older adults, and anyone who does not have access to a vehicle. General street improvements. Respondents commented on a need to keep up with street maintenance, lighting, and streetscape improvements. This goes back to one of the barriers that we talked about earlier. How can we make sure that we are communicating well with our elected officials that maintenance uh, things like mill and overlays of our community, of our streets, or full street reconstructions are important for us to continue to budget for and accommodate in future uh, capital improvement program dollars. Rail and truck traffic. Winona being a hub for rail and truck transportation, interstate highway, and several rail lines. Ideas for addressing traffic issues related to tr uh, train and truck activity. Here today, we did talk about that briefly, but when we do go through and fill out that matrix, please do keep in mind, how can we safely do that? What elements should we be adding to our plan to accommodate that? And acting as a regional and state connection or tying into those state connections. And Winona is only one to two hours away from multiple metro areas and future plans should incorporate regional connections. Some of that also includes different modes of tra transportation that we don't currently have. In the 2007 plan, for example, we touched on turning the airport into key uh, in and out hub for our community. And I would say that it's still probably underutilized compared to what we could grow into. But similarly, we have airports in La Crosse, in Rochester, and up in the Twin Cities that should be accessible. Similarly, the ability to tie into things like the Great River um, or Great State Bike Trail over in Wisconsin, the Flyway Trail, and other elements, US Bikeway 45, are also key things that Winona could orient itself toward in its transportation network. So I do want to encourage you that as you fill out that matrix to remember that this is part of that framework document. Go back and reference it, and I'll send it out with that matrix to the full committee so that while you're doing your homework, you can go ahead and immediately make those tie-ins from what you heard or from what we heard. If you do want to go back and look at the raw data for any of that, Engagement Ona does have individual responses on its website. So if you really want to comb through the thousands of responses and really 
uh, begin to pull it out. If this isn't satisfactory to you, you are able to do that there. With that, I have now given you a, a task for the next meeting, but we have not set a date for the next meeting. I am hoping that we can all take out our calendars and spend a little bit of time here picking that next date. I would suggest that maybe June 9th at 4 p.m. might be a good fit for the rest of this group if we were all able to do that again. Um, it seems like that 4 p.m. hour does work for most people. And for the members who have actually missed a couple of meetings, they've actually been communicating with me and they've just missed because of odd moments, not because of an inability to meet at that time. All right, June 9th does not work for one of us. How about the 16th? What about this? What about the 16th? Brian, you're kind of nodding your head in a non committal way. You are muted. The 9th would be easier, but the 16th uh, would be okay. Randy? <laughs> One would work for me. All right, perfect. Let's go ahead and pencil in the 16th at 4 p.m. And I'll send out a placeholder meeting reminder here for everybody. So that's gonna be our third meeting. And again, you do have homework to kind of fill out that matrix and take a look at what we feel was achieved, barriers are still desirable to include in the next plan. I also want to draw your attention to the 21st. So our intention here for June 21st is to host a public meeting, um, a featured speaker opportunity with Chuck Marone of Strong Towns, who does talk. He is a civil engineer and a, an urban planner who is kind of committed to talking more about that fiscal sustainability element of our transportation networks and the resiliency of our communities. Uh, some of you are probably aware that transportation makes up about 25%, uh, the transportation network takes up about 25% to 30% of our overall land in our community. And so being able to look at how we use it well is going to be a critical component of the comp plan. And that's something that we do anticipate Chuck touching on in a curbside chat. So tentatively, 6.30 p.m. at the Friendship Center on the 21st. Also tentatively, we might host a second conversation with him at 11.30 a.m. that day. And that would be Zoom, that would be um, over Zoom in case anybody wasn't able to make that in public. Those would be potentially two different conversations with him. And I will send out a reminder as soon as we have those dates finalized. Any final closing questions, comments, or concerns from the group? All right. I wanna thank you all very much for your time. Thank you all for being here, your good ideas, your conversation, and I appreciate you helping move us forward in our comprehensive plan planning process. I will see you all on the 16th at 4 p.m. Have a good day. Thank you. Pretty.